when was the death of a gladiator in the arena mandatory? The gladiatorial theme in the history of ancient Rome is one of the most popular, if not hackneyed. And one of the most favorite questions by the authors is whether gladiators really fought in the arena, that is, to the death, or still more make-believe. I have no desire to write global analytics on this issue yet, I want to clarify the following point. Gladiators in ancient Rome, like any social phenomenon, experienced birth, development, flourishing and death. And throughout all these stages, both the appearance of the gladiator and his essence changed significantly, very significantly. Usually, when people say gladiator, they mean by this term a classic arena fighter, imagining something like this. In fact, this is what the very late gladiators looked like. The 2nd 3rd century AD approximately. The early ones looked completely different, and the essence and meaning of their existence was different. If the late classic gladiator is a fighter showman, whose goal is to amuse the crowd, to give it a spectacle, then the early, primordial gladiator is, victim. It is an object for sacrifice. Initially, this was not a Roman custom at all, but a Campanian one, the tribes who lived in the south of Italy, in the Campania region. One of the first, if not the very first case of mentioning gladiators is 308 BC, when the Romans and their Campanian allies celebrated victory over the Samnite tribe. It was the allies who then brought gladiators in Samnite armor to the arenas and forced them to fight among themselves. At the same time, apparently, the most ancient class of gladiators appeared, Samnite. Although, by the way, Titus Livy mentions that these same gladiators at that time among the Campanians gave performances at feasts, but without details. And this was not yet a Roman custom. He appeared in Rome in 264 BC, when the brothers Mark and Decimus Brutus staged the first gladiator fights at the Bull Forum, the cattle market. The late pope left them a sizable sum for his funeral, bequeathing them to buy six slaves, break them in pairs, and make them fight in his honor. Tertullian wrote, those killed in this way were considered a sacrifice offered in honor of deceased relatives. And these fighters were called bustuaries. From the word bustum, funeral pyre. The performance of the first bustuaries made a real sensation in Rome. The people were impressed. But nevertheless, such a holiday was repeated only half a century later, in 216, when the three sons of consul Marcus Apilius Lepidus staged funeral games in memory of their father. 22 pairs of gladiators bustuaries fought then for three days. Soon this practice became traditional for the rich and noble Romans. It was both a way to demonstrate his wealth and influence and to attract the plebs to his side by buying his attention, and during this historical period, at least one of the fighting pair of gladiators had to be killed because the duel itself was precisely a form of sacrifice to the gods or the souls of ancestors. Two will enter, one will come out, nothing personal, before the idea of perceiving gladiatorial fights as purely a spectacle, and the fighters themselves as not victims, but rather sports fighters, like in the Greek Pancration, society still had to mature. No socio-psychological changes occur instantly. But the people very quickly figured out how to solve personal problems with the help of a sword in the arena, not slaves bought on the market, and not those free who sell their blood. They entered into a duel of their own free will, and there was no payment here. Some were sent by the kings to set an example of the valor inherent in their tribe, others volunteered themselves out of affection for the leader, others were motivated by jealousy or confrontation to summon a rival or not to refuse the challenge. Those who could not or did not want to end the disputed matter peacefully were persuaded to solve it with a sword, the winner would get what they were arguing about. After the gladiatorial duels, funeral games were given, which could be given with the money of the province and with camp equipment. These are the lines of Titus Livy about a series of public duels organized by Scipio in 206 BC in Spain as part of the funeral games arranged by him in honor of his father and uncle who fell at the hands of the Puns, Carthaginians. This, again, is not yet pure gladiatorial games, but something closer, oddly enough, either to medieval tournaments, to show an example of valor, or to judicial duels, again medieval, they were persuaded to solve a controversial case with a sword. Although, by the way, for the mentality of the ancient Roman, a military tournament as it was understood in the Middle Ages is not an honorable thing, but rather, dirty. But this will be the next article. In the meantime, let's summarize, the death of a gladiator in the arena was mandatory only in that historical period when he was considered a walking sacrifice to the gods and the fight itself, the duel, was only a form of sacrifice. When the semantic accents shifted towards not religious rituals but spectacles, everything changed. Then, by the way, special gladiatorial schools began to open 